There are 18 types of weapons in Destiny 2, from hand cannons to fusion rifles to rocket launchers and everything in between. So here are the best weapons for each type in PvE. I'm Marshix, and these are my opinions, so if you disagree with anything I say, deal with it. And if you enjoy this video, all I ask for is a like down below. Auto Rifles. This is already a tough decision. I love Amit, Rufus, Abyss Defiant, and Prosecutor, but I think number one has to be Quicksilver Storm. This occasionally shoots out micro rockets, and whenever these hit, it loads a grenade. Then you can swap to an alternate grenade launcher mode and use those grenades to take down beefier targets. And this is a kinetic weapon, but if you equip the catalyst, it becomes a strand weapon that can create tangles with the grenades. I will say, I used to not really like Quicksilver, but it has definitely grown on me over the past few months. The sight not being in the middle is a bit annoying, but it deals so much damage, especially with unraveling rounds, that it more than makes up for it. Bows. There are so many great bows out there, but none of them are legendary. I immediately think of Lamonarch and Trinity Ghoul, but I gotta go with the bow I use most of the time, Wishender. This deals a lot more damage than normal bows, and it has built-in anti-barrier to go through various objects and stun anti-barrier champions too. It also has wall hacks, but this is PvE, why do you need wall hacks? Overall, it's just a really solid bow for single target damage, and it's definitely my top pick for GMs. It can one-shot just about every red bar, and it does an amazing job of taking out champions too. If it came down to pure ad clear, Trinity Ghoul would win every time, but overall, there's no beating Wishender. Fusion Rifles I'm torn between Riptide and Scatter Signal. These are both rapid fire frames in the kinetic slot, so it basically comes down to the perk pools. Riptide has Chill Clip, which is good for crowd control, and allows you to stun champions with it. But on the other hand, Scatter Signal is a strand fusion that gets overflow for a massive magazine size and controlled burst for an easy to activate damage perk. While Riptide is the more versatile option, I gotta go with Scatter Signal. This deals way more damage, making it better for taking out majors, and when paired with unraveling rounds, it's one of the best sub DPS options available right now. You can fire this into a boss non-stop since his magazine size is 16, and every shot after the first one will have that damage buff from controlled burst. Glaives. Okay, this one's easy. All of them are bad, outside of a few niche builds. Special Grenade Launchers. As much as I want to say Wither Horde, the obvious answer is Forbearance. This is a waveframe grenade launcher that gets Ambitious Assassin to hold two grenades at a time, as well as Chain Reaction to easily wipe out big groups of enemies with every single shot. This is one of the best weapons for ad clear, and the only downside to this is that it takes special ammo. But even then, it's still a very strong option, and it's really easy to get. You can get this from the Vow of the Disciple raid, or from the Brave Arsenal. Just play Onslaught and spend trophies of bravery. You can even attune for it to get more drops, and in the final shape, it can get enhanced perks. This isn't identical to the old version, but it's just as good, if not better, since you can get grenade or melee energy with every single kill thanks to its origin trait. And to those of you who think Soul Drinker is better, you're just wrong. Why do you need minor healing when Devour, Restoration, Woven Mail, Healing Grenades, Healing Rifts, and Sunspots exist? Not to mention, there's going to be so many broken prismatic builds that revolve around abilities, you're going to want this. Now, for heavy grenade launchers, this one's a little weird. Edge Transit. Specifically, the shiny Edge Transit. Edge Transit gets Envious Assassin to triple the magazine size all the way up to 18 shots. It also gets Bait and Switch for one of the highest damage buffs in the game at 30%. This is great because you can load the mag up to 18, proc Bait and Switch on the first shot, then you have the remaining 17 shots, all with the damage buff. But it gets even better if you're lucky enough to get the Super God Roll. The limited edition shiny version of Edge Transit gets two additional perks. If you can get the God Roll mentioned before with Cascade Point as an optional perk, you can load 18 grenades with Envious, then swap the third column perk to Cascade Point, and then dump all 18 in the matter of seconds. In theory, this should be really high burst damage. Although, I wouldn't know because I don't have it. The only downside to this weapon is that getting the super god roll of this is nearly impossible. I've done probably 25 full runs of Onslaught, which reminder takes about an hour each, and I've only gotten two shiny edge transit. And they're both garbage! Okay, hand cannons are supposed to be next, but I can't really make up my mind, so I'm gonna come back to this. Linear fusion rifles. There have been so many top tier linear fusions over the years, like Taipan, Reed's Regret, Cataclysmic, Storm Chaser, Briar's Contempt, Heck, even Sleeper Simulant. But the current best has to be Doom Petitioner. 
This is a three round burst linear that gets envious assassin to get up to 18 shots in the mag. And you can pair that with precision instrument to give you a 30% damage buff after just two shots. On any other weapon, it would be six shots, but because this is a three round burst, you get all six in only two bursts. And if that didn't sell you on it, it also gets reconstruction and surrounded. The exact same god roll that Briar's Contempt gets. Not to mention, this is a void weapon, which means it can take advantage of volatile rounds for additional damage against big bosses, and its origin trait can lower its charge time to make it shoot slightly faster for even more damage in a shorter amount of time. Machine Gun. This is probably the most controversial opinion of the video. I think Hammerhead is overrated. Commemoration is just so much better. This gets reconstruction so you never have to reload, plus it doubles the magazine size so you can fire it for so much longer. Pair this with Killing Tally for the perfect combo, allowing you to keep max stacks of Killing Tally basically forever, and just use this as your main ad clear. Hammerhead does come close, getting access to Rampage in the third column, alongside a variety of other damage perks in the fourth column, but it has one glaring flaw. Its mag size is so small, like four inches. Sure, there are ways around that like Hunter Dodge and Actium War Rig, but you really have to build around it to make it work. Long story short, Hammerhead with double damage perks is the number one machine gun for Hunters running Marksman Dodge. And Commemoration is better for everyone else. And me being the Warlock main I am, that means Commemoration is my number one pick. Although, Aztecross did make a good point in his Hammerhead review. If we get exotic class items that can merge Actium War Rig with another good exotic like Gur Falcons or Nezarek Sin, Hammerhead could easily take that top spot. But until then, I'm sticking with Commemoration. Pulse Rifles. Okay, this is easy. Graviton Lance wins by far. Nothing even comes close. Graviton Lance creates massive explosions with every kill, and those explosions chain, so one kill can lead to many, many other kills. And in some cases, it can completely spawn trap enemies and kill them before they even realize where they are. Rocket Launchers. The ones that come to mind are Apex Predator, Hothead, Cold Comfort, Gallahorn, and Crux Termination. Crux needs slide shot to be good, and I've never gotten one, so personally, I think that's off the table for me. Gallahorn is more of a support option, so I don't really see it being number one. Then Hothead and Cold Comfort have kind of been power crept, so that just leaves Apex Predator. This is a solar rocket launcher that gets reconstruction to hold two rockets at a time, and bait and switch for an easy to activate 30% damage buff, one of the best in the game. This is a solid DPS option against bosses, and you don't have to jump through many hoops to get this to perform at 100%. Scout Rifles. I know Doom of Chelches and Hung Jury both get double damage perks, but even those don't stand a chance against Polaris Lance. This weapon essentially has infinite ammo as long as you hit your headshots. After hitting 4 crits, the 5th shot will explode, dealing scorched damage to anything it hits. With Ember of Ashes, it only takes 2 of those perfect 5th shots to ignite a target. And with the help of Flint Striker and Kindling Trigger, you can lower this down to one perfect fifth shot. This means every five shots, you'll create an ignition that deals a bunch of damage in a large area. And it will also stun unstoppable champions. Also, fire this at max fire rate, and you can even stun lock bosses in place, leaving them completely open and allowing you to dump your infinite ammo directly into their face. Shotguns. Okay, this one might surprise some people, but I'm actually going with Wastelander. This shotgun gets the usual shotgun perks like Vorpal Weapon, Trench Barrel, and 1-2 Punch, and it also gets access to Lead from Gold in the other column. This makes it really ammo efficient, being able to get special ammo each time you pick up heavy bricks, and this makes it a great option when considering double special weapons. You can have this in your Kinetic slot for Majors and Bosses, and Indebted Kindness in your Energy slot for Ad Clear with Vault Shot. And if it wasn't obvious, Indebted Kindness is my top pick for sidearms. This is a special ammo rocket sidearm that gets vault shot for some crazy ad clear on top of the hard hitting projectiles it already fires. And same thing as Wastelander. It can roll with lead from gold to have a more consistent stream of ammo so you can basically run this as your primary weapon and easily run double specials. Also, it's worth mentioning that it can stun anti-barrier champions in only one shot, way faster than any other weapon. Arbalist has a charge time, Wishender has a draw time, and just about everything else takes multiple shots. So this is probably the quickest and most reliable way to stun barrier champions, on top of being an excellent ad clearing weapon too. Sniper Rifles. I could probably say Succession with Tac Mag, Reconstruction, and Vorpal, and no one would disagree. But honestly, I think Whisper has finally made a comeback. 
Whisper of the Worm has a three round magazine, and when you land three crits in a row, it will return one ammo to the reserves and completely refill the mag, allowing you to dump all your ammo without ever reloading, assuming you never miss a shot. Against bosses with big crits, or if you have a teammate running Divinity, this thing can output some crazy high total damage. With well over 30 shots, this is very ammo efficient, and it can be crafted to get field prep for even more ammo and a faster reload speed if you do happen to miss a shot. And I didn't even mention its catalyst, which gives it Whisper Breathing, a massive 50% damage buff just by aiming down sights for approximately one second. And it's a solar weapon, so it only gets better with the current artifact. I highly recommend getting this thing. Oh look, a guide right there in the corner. SMGs. I'm gonna get so much hate for this in the comments. All the Ikelo simps and osteobros and recluse lovers, I'm sorry, but you're all wrong because Kalos Mini Tool is the best and it's been the best SMG for so long. Enhanced Incandescent makes it insanely powerful in all solar builds. And even in other builds, it's still one of the best ad clearing SMGs in the game. It even has an origin trait that increases your discipline and strength by 20 points each. And it's a lightweight frame, so it gives you 20 mobility for free too. What other SMG offers that many stats with no downsides? Probably none. All of those other SMGs are really good, but Callus Mini Tool feels really great to use and offers a lot in terms of stats, build crafting, and general ad clear. I genuinely don't think any of those other SMGs even come close to Callus Mini Tool. Swords. Any sword with Eager Edge, and also Lament. Lament is an exotic sword that is voiced by a breast pump. That's true, look it up. You can rev up this sword to deal increased damage, and it will heal you with every hit, making it great for survivability against bosses who get up in your face. It also has built-in anti-barrier, so it's not a terrible option for higher level activities where you do have to deal with champions. Just don't take this into a GM, you'll probably still die. Trace Rivals. I don't use Trace Rifles often, but when I do, it's normally Divinity. This creates a giant bubble around its target as you shoot it. This bubble will act as its crit spot, making it much easier for your teammates to hit crits with things like Whisper that relies heavily on crits. It also applies a 15% debuff, so not only will your useless teammates be able to do their one job, this debuff kinda makes up for the damage you would be dealing with a heavy weapon. And when you pair those with Cenotaph Mask, you literally never have to reload, and you can make heavy ammo for your entire team. It's so nice. Hand Cannons. Okay, I still can't decide between Sunshot, Zaoli's Bane, and Malfeasance. All of these are great, and I use them all the time, but I did ultimately decide to cut Zaoli's because it's just a Sunshot 0.5, and for the other two, I decided to leave it up to you. I created an exotic hand cannon tournament, featuring every exotic hand cannon, not just the two I picked. Every day for the past week and a half, you've been able to vote for your favorites. First up was Ace of Spades vs Malfeasance. Malfeasance just barely won. Next was Crimson vs Sturm, and Crimson won by a landslide. But it was up against Sturm, so that doesn't mean much. Lumina vs Ariana's Vow was no surprise, just like Hawkmoon vs Sunshot, and Last Word vs Thorn. But round two is where things get spicy. Crimson, which had a huge lead just a minute ago, got annihilated by Malfeasance and Thorn was also crushed by Sunshot. I'm not surprised by Sunshot winning, but people love Thorn, so I thought it would be a much closer vote. And the final match of round two was Malfeasance versus Lumina. And because you are all so predictable, we enter the final round just as expected, with Malfeasance versus Sunshot. And by a landslide, Sunshot is the most popular exotic hand cannon right now in Destiny 2. If you enjoyed this video, I know you'll enjoy this one too, where I go over the 50 best exotic combos in Destiny 2. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Marshix, and I'll see you next time.